So, first of all, who am I? Uh, so this is not working. Okay, uh, my name is Dusan Stevanovic. I am a developer at a company called Nordius. And I'm a tech lead uh, working with guys that are really football enthusiasts, soccer enthusiasts, working on a game called Top 11, making new features there. And what is Nordius? Nordius is an independent gaming studio uh, founded in 2010 uh, with HQ in Belgrade, Serbia. But we have offices in London and Dublin also. And uh, we are currently hiring uh, 160 top talents from all over the world. We are best known by our game Top 11. And for all of you that don't know what it is. So Top 11 is a soccer management simulation game. It's been launched in 2010. So we've been working on it uh, for m almost seven years now. Uh, making new features, it's been played in every country in the world. We've seen uh, more than 150 million of registered users. And uh, as you can see here, uh, Jose Mourinho is our brand ambassador. And during these seven years, we've been working with uh, top clubs all around the world, football clubs, soccer clubs here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we've continually been making the game better and better, listening to feedback, uh, making new features, making improvements. But let's get about technical stuff. So I'll have to um, uh, just uh, make the talk a bit uh, different for the audience here. So uh, can you please raise your hands if you've been using sprite sheets or know the benefits of sprite sheets? OK, so most of you. So I'm going just fast through this. So a lot of images here, a lot of objects rendered on this scene with images. These images uh, are custom sized, and we have to place it in memory. As you know, we like to put it uh, with uh, size of uh, power of 2, or even some devices squared. All of that images are padded, so we have uh, wasted memory. And the way of solving that is by using sprite sheets, packing those images inside of uh, one image. And if it's nicely packed, we are not losing a lot of memory. For example, here, we have hundreds of images packed. This is an example from top 11. So we have memory benefit. And even better than that, we have performance gain. And how can we see performance gain? So, one example how everything is rendered with, for example, OpenGL. So when you want to render something on the screen, what happens? The game has to send three information to the OpenGL. So it's the image itself that we want to render, what part of it we are going to render, and on which part of the screen we want to render that. So when the game is sending first image, uh, OpenGL is rendering it, then the next one, the next one, and so on. We we'll lose a lot of time in communication. So how do spreadsheets solve this? Uh, so we are sending one image here. We are sending which parts of it we want to render, so which individual images we want to render, and for each one of them, on which part of the screen we want to render it, and that's it. One communication's finished, everything open, uh, is rendered on OpenGL, game can continue doing whatever it wants during that time. And uh, if you've been using Unity 2D or new Unity GUI system, you've probably been using uh, sprite sheets, and how? So there are two ways. First one is, you're entering your custom-made sprite sheets made with third-party tools. You're adding them in Unity in multiple sprite mode. You can just mark the individual sprites inside of it with sprite editor, and that's it. You can use sprite sheets. The other way is uh, you can just use individual images, use them whatever you want in the scene, and then you can enable sprite packer, also integrated inside of Unity, and in the build time, it's going to do everything. It's going to make sprite sheets, uh, replace all the references in the scene, and that's all. You're going to use spreadsheets. There are many more options here, like uh, custom pivots, uh, custom borders for each sprite uh, to preserve space and use it optimally. Uh, there are custom packing policies, and much more. You can find all about that in Unity documentation. So what's important? When we can make these spreadsheets inside build time, why do we need them dynamically made in uh, runtime? So, you, have, uh, you can have uh, dynamically changeable content inside of your game. So for example, if you're making a sport game and you're having uh, real players inside of it, and you have their images, and from season to season, they are changing. They are getting beard, changing hairstyle, getting fatter, thinner, whatever. Uh, and you want to change their look in your game, but you don't want to release the game every time they change look. Uh, that's the good position where you can use images stored online, download them dynamically when you need them. Or you can see the example here. We have some items, and 
user can see only part of it. It's a scrollable list. Uh, he can scroll, but we don't know if he's going to scroll. So he sees like 15 items. Some of them are locked because he's low level or whatever. So uh, in this case, it's not good to use pre-made spreadsheets because you don't want to download thousands of images in one spreadsheet or whatever because you don't need all of them. You need only some of them uh, depending on the current state of the game for the current user. And, but you still want all the benefits, memory and performance benefits you get from the spreadsheet. So you can still make them, of course. There are some things you have to take care of. So when you're making spreadsheets in build time, you're making them on high-end PC. On your office, uh, you have whatever time you want. So you can make the perfect alignment. Here you're working on a device. This device is a lot slower. And uh, what you need to do, you have to make some compromises uh, so the user doesn't feel uh, the performance drop when you're making spreadsheet. So first of all, you don't need the perfect alignment of the sprites in the spreadsheet. Why? Because you can just add them almost randomly. Not randomly, some algorithm to make them use of most, most of the space. But while you're having empty space, just add new images. Uh, at the point when you don't have enough space, that's the place you're going to rearrange them. That's one time you're going to rearrange them and make new space for new images. You want to reuse the space. So when you're removing some image from the spreadsheet, you just mark that part of the texture or whatever. It's unused. Don't clear the pixel. It's just empty work. And you are going to reuse that space later. If you have some info, uh, you have to use it. So for example, if you know that each image inside the spreadsheet is of the same size, use that info to make grid alignment. The algorithm for arrangement is going to be really simple. Just index them by the grid. And you can replace them really easily because all of them are of the same size. And really important thing is don't waste your memory by having two instances of image uh, in the memory at the same time. Example. So when you're downloading an image, you have one instance. And you, when you're placing it inside the spreadsheet, there is a second instance. So don't forget to delete the first one. You don't want to have extra memory and lose the benefit of spreadsheet in the meantime. So how do we do it? How do we do it really in the C sharp? Uh, we, how do we implement uh, dynamic spreadsheet? So we downloaded the first image. We have it in the memory. And we are creating spreadsheet. First of all, we create a render texture, one render texture. And initial size of render texture should uh, meet three rules. First one, you want it to be large enough to take the first initial image you want to take inside of it. Secondly, uh, you want to meet the size requirements power of two, or even some devices you want squared. So you don't want to make it padded like from the initial images you are placing in memory. And the third uh, hint I want to give is if you know it's going to be 10 images inside of it from the beginning, make it large enough to take 10, 10 images. It can be resized for the 11th, 12th, and so on. But you don't want to resize it uh, all the time if you know you're going to have 10 images. So make it large enough for the first batch of images you're adding. OK. We have render texture. We have image downloaded from the internet, individual image. So uh, how we are going to draw it? We make one mesh that's going to map the corners of the individual image to the position in the, inside of the sprite sheet. We mark the render texture as a render target. And with the one draw call, you're going to render it. Delete the image downloaded from the internet. Continue on. The second image, the same thing. Third image, the same thing. So at one point, you won't have enough uh, space for the next image. And what you're going to do. So make new render texture, the larger one. Mark it as a render target. And uh, now you have to re redraw all the images from the old render texture to the new render texture. And how to do that? One thing I forgot. Every time we were adding the small individual images inside of the spreadsheet, we have to keep one information. Where is it positioned inside of the spreadsheet? And what size? It's, so width and height, x and y. We take that info make one mesh that's going to mark, map the positions in the old render texture to the positions in the new render texture. One mesh mapping all of them. Don't forget only the ones you're still using. You don't want to re-render the ones you're not using. One draw call, you render everything to the new render texture. You have new empty space. You can delete the old render texture. That's it. We have regenerated the atlas. When you're removing the images from the sprite sheet, what do you do? You just mark this place as we told before. Just mark the spaces unused. You maybe are going to reuse it later in some cases. OK, I want to show you how does it work in top 11. So this is production build. 
and uh, it's in editor, but it's work the same in the build. I'll play it, and I'll go immediately to the place I know dynamic sprite sheets are used. Uh, and we can easily see it in editor how the texture changes in time. So let's go there. Mm. Um, I didn't connect the internet, sorry. I forgot to change the internet. It'll take a few seconds. Oh, sorry. The internet is refusing to connect somehow. For, forgot to change it from the hotel. Okay, uh, so it's basically doing this thing you're seeing here in the texture. So the initial texture has some data. As we scroll down the list, it's adding more and more images inside the spreadsheet, inside of the render texture. Okay, uh, so the company I work for, Nordius, sent people here a few times. Uh, giving speeches, and always the best feedback we got is by sharing the, our implementation. We've been, we've been using this system for, I don't know, two or three years now, and it's been in production for that time, so we just separated it from all of our systems and placed it on the GitHub. So if you go to this link, you'll find the total implementation of dynamic sprite sheets, or sprite sheets made in runtime. Uh, and because it's separated from each GUI system, you can use it with either Unity GUI or with any of your custom GUIs. And how? So, first of all, in our implementation, sprite sheets called atlases is just commonly known syn synonym. And we have two of them, grid and absolute atlas. Grid atlas, as I talked before, uses the information that each image is of the same size. So it places them by the grid, and algorithm is simple, it works fast, but it has a limitation that all the individual images has to be of the same size. Absolute Atlas, on the other hand, can, uh, can take any combination of images, so large image, small image, so on, any combination. It uses uh, Texture Packer class, the open sourced one, uh, to arrange the images in the, in the sprite sheet. And it, it has no limitation of size combination, but it's a bit slower. Two things you have to take care of if you want to implement it in your system. So there is Atlas class and Sprite Data class. Atlas class has a, just a link to the texture and a collection of Sprite data. And Sprite data is uh, information where individual images inside the Sprite sheet. X, Y, width, height, that's all. So you take the Atlas class and merge it with your Sprite sheet implementation, whichever it is, and that's it. How do you do it in Unity GUI? In Unity GUI, there is one difference that one atlas, one atlas that has information about all images inside of the sprite sheet in our implementation. In Unity implementation, you have uh, one sprite object for each individual image inside the sprite sheet. So each sprite object has the reference to the texture, has the reference, uh, has the position of one image. And uh, how to overcome this difference is really simple. You just maintain the collection of sprites inside of the atlas. So every time the new image is added, you create sprite. Every time the image is uh, removed, delete sprite. And when you have to uh, render to new render texture, so you're moving all the sprites inside of the sprite sheet, you have to update all the sprite objects. That's all. Uh, what uh, API we've been using? So in the Unity, you have image component that's rendering one image from the sprite sheet, one sprite from the sprite sheet. Uh, you can extend that image component, and uh, it should take URL, download the image, send the image to the uh, sprite sheet, dynamic sprite sheet. It will return sprite object, and that's all. You can use sprite object to render the image. Uh, all the time I've been talking about images from internet, but our implementation takes texture objects, not the objects of, not the URLs. It's not downloading the images. You can use standard Unity API to do that. So if, because it's using texture objects, it can work with uh, textures from the internet, but it can also work with textures from the resources in combination of it. It's okay. So what are the key points I would like you to remember here? Sprite sheets are great, memory optimization, uh, performance optimization. You can make in runtime. You, can just, you just have to make some compromises to uh, keep up the high performance. And you can download our implementation and start using it immediately. 
thank you all for listening to me. Uh, I'll be answering some questions here now. You can also find me at the end of the conference anywhere on the hallways. Uh, I'll be happy to talk to you to exchange some information, to exchange our uh, previous uh, workings and so on. Uh, drink a beer. Uh, you can take some gifts I brought here from my company. First come, first serve. There are some notes. There are some. Uh, if you're playing top 11, there are free tokens here. So do you have any questions now? Maybe I should have told tell that in the end of the questions. <laughs> first come, first serve. I have more, maybe. Uh, so, question there? No, no, no. It's uh, because we are making this, that uh, compromises, not moving the sprite sprites all the time, just at the point when we don't have enough space. The, the pro, there is no performance drop. There is, it's not even visible to the users. We are doing it uh, continually. For example, we, we have a scrollable list. You're scrolling the list, and at every scroll, you add like three or four new items to the sprite sheet. There is no performance drop there because it's one draw call every time. More questions, anything? So thank you all for coming.